everybody let me just I should have got myself organized before I clicked on that but I didn't so here I am I'm just getting myself oh. organized hold on so if you are coming in hi just let me get myself organized say hi if you're here um and I am going to go to Facebook now so I've sorted out YouTube Ah, uh, that we don't need that. I hope you are well on this fine morning. Uh, find your joy taster, and there I see myself. Pin to featured. Um, just find your joy taster. Okay, there I am. So I see I have a few couple of people here. Um, I have a funny bit of hair uh, going weird. I can't remember. I can't tell which side it's on on the camera. But uh, so ignore my funny hair. Bad hair day. Um, I am just going to wait till a few more people come in. Say hi in the in the comments so that I know you're here. I have a few questions that I'll answer that have been coming into the emails. And um, so I think if one person's asked them, probably other people have the same questions. And then, um, hi, Beth. Hi, Eva. Hi, Libby. Leslie. Yale. Lovely to see you all in YouTube. That's nice. And in Facebook, I see we have people watching, but they're silent people. So, um I'm early, so I'm just going to let everybody come in. I've got my cup of tea. Hi, Felis. Nice to meet you. I hope I said that right. Felis Bobs. Is that really your name or is that a Facebook name? Felis Bobs. But nice to see you anyway. And it's your first live chat. Um, is that because you are down under? And this was the wrong time for you. So in the live course, in the um, taster course, we have the live calls in the evening UK time. And I know that's not ideal. Well, it's not. It's far from ideal if you're down under because it's the wrong time. Uh, you're Cass and you're in Australia. Yes. So you couldn't make it before. So I'm glad that you could make it now. Hi, Lydia from Wales. Hi, Anne. Hi, Diane from New Zealand. Oh, I'm glad that some people came. So I gather it's evening for you. I know in parts of Australia, it's 7 p.m., but I'm not. I think you have big time differences, don't you? Because it's such a big country. So. Um, I'm just looking at somebody's question. Sorry, I won't answer that just yet, Wendy, but I'll answer you first as soon as I make sure everybody's here. So we're just going to have a nice, oh, wow, so many people on YouTube. Hi, everybody on YouTube. Hi, Steve in Cumbria. Vivienne, nice to see you. Uh, Wendy from Suffolk. Anne-Marie from Tasmania. Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. QLD in Australia, says Rhonda. Gillian, hi. Yes, during the taster course, just because we're cramming it into such a small amount of time, I can't vary the times on the live calls. It misses out so many people. Most of the people who take the taster are a, a big percentage are in North America and Canada. And so if we do it for Australia and New Zealand time, they miss out. And with it being a short space of time we've got, I can't do it. In the full course, we do two calls every week and one of them is at this time because I don't want anyone to feel left out, um, especially when you've invested money. I want you to be able to see us live and join in live. So shall I turn that light off behind me? That's a bit distracting, isn't it? Okay. Um, Melbourne, 7 p.m. Perfect, says Diane. Serafina in Scarborough, QLD. Oh, we have Scarborough here. We're the first Scarborough. Scarborough is across the, is really near where my exhibition is actually, out on the coast. Uh, Gold Coast, Australia, 7 p.m. So this will be a perfect time then, hopefully, for Australia. And I'm not sure if New Zealand is the same time. I'm sorry, I really need to learn these times better. 
Um, and Cass is sitting in a car freezing, waiting to pick up her daughter from Taekwondo. So, um, okay, let me... Uh, Lindsay says, I've had such a breakthrough in my life doing your taster course. Yay, I'm so pleased, Lindsay. That is such a rewarding thing to hear. So I'm going to answer Wendy's questions uh, because they're the first ones that came in. If you have a question, please just type it in. And it can be about what we learned on the taster. It can be about the, the course. We're just going to have a, a leisurely chat. There's no um, big sales pitch here or anything. I just want to be available to people to answer questions. So Wendy asked the deadline. So the deadline to sign up is June the 2nd. So I think, is that Thursday? Let me check my calendar. Um, yeah, Thursday, June the 2nd at midnight Pacific time, which for me is about eight in the morning in the UK on Friday the 3rd, but for most people, midnight Pacific time. And that is... Um, a set time like we stop taking sales after that and that's because we need time to kind of take a breath and then prepare ourselves to to launch the full course which starts just a few days later on we have a live call welcoming you on June the 5th and then which is the Sunday night and then we start with the first lesson on Monday so we're right into this I don't want anyone to have time to slack off we're going to get started how much time do you need to put aside minimum to do the course? I think five to six hours. You have about half an hour to 40 minutes of videos to watch on a Monday. Those are lesson and assignment videos, just like you got in the taster course. Then an hour or two to do the assignment. And I've created assignments that are expansive, which means you can spend a lot more time than that if you want to. You could do a series of the assignment. You could spend a lot of time on the painting, but an hour or two hours would be plenty to get the idea. Then we have a live call, which you can either attend or watch recorded. I really recommend not missing at least the recording because we do cover a lot in those and a lot of light bulbs go off for people in the coaching calls. So that's another hour. And then at the end of the week, I give you some bonus content, which is usually a half hour or so video that I found on the internet that reinforces what we're learning and some demos that I've recorded of me doing the Monday assignment. And so all told, you're talking about five to six hours. Then you can spend a lot more if you want to go much deeper into the assignments there are journaling and painting assignments and they're the kind of thing, yes, you can do both in two hours, but if you gave it four hours or six hours, you probably get more out of it. So it's as much time as you want, but if you're only able to give it the five to six hours, of course, you've got the assignments forever so you can go back over it. Although you only get a year's access to the, the classroom hub online, you get downloads every week, which give you the the lesson transcript, the painting exercise, you get a materials list download, you get, so you'll have everything you need to do those exercises over and over again. And is there a taster? Well, the taster was what we just did, Wendy, that, um, that seven or eight days, I don't know if you missed that, but that taster is still available. So email us if you missed that, fyjteam at gmail.com and we'll hook you up with the links. Um, but that is pretty much, the taster is like, a, is like the course on speed. So if you like the taster, but you felt like it was a bit intense, we slow down, we take more time. It's much gentler. There's more time to um, really get into it and to learn there's so much in the in the uh, taster course that you'll be integrating that for months so we we take it at a much more slower pace uh how uh lindsay says does the course run until 6th of june to week commencing 15th i believe the last day is the 12th lindsay of august 
Um, hold on, let me pull up my calendar again and I'll tell you for sure. Um, so we start on June the 6th, module two, module three, and then we go all through July, module four, five, six. Module eight, which is the last module, because we oh, it's 10 weeks, but there are eight modules because there are two special weeks where there's a different focus, um, starts on the 8th of August and finishes on Friday the 12th. So your last bonus content will come out on Friday the 12th. Uh, I will get to YouTube questions as well. I'm on Facebook at the moment. Um, Leslie, Taste of Course was fabulous and you are really inspiring. I know you have had textile artists previously. I would like to expand with my something with fabrics. So I'm not sure how this might fit in. So because this course is about you doing you and you finding out what's for you, really anything fits in. I suppose occasionally, and I'm trying to think through the assignments, there might be something where the instructions are, are specifically towards paint and you might need a little bit of help adapting that assignment to work with fabrics, or you might not. But if you did, you just email us. Um, we have a special email for you for students and we answer every single email and we just coach you on how to adapt the assignment because what we want is for you to find you whether that is making pots, um, making sculptures, doing performance art, doing paintings. Yes, the exercises that I set are set in terms of paint and paper, but there's no reason that can't be adapted to other things. Um, but that's, you know, it's really up to you, Leslie. It's not a textiles course, I'd be really clear about that, but I don't see any reason why it can't be that for you if that's what you're interested in uh let me go to youtube um jillian asked i joined the facebook this painting life group is it active still as far as i know um that group, let's have a look. Unless Facebook has removed it for some reason, there's no reason why it wouldn't be. That's the very first group that I set up. Um, and I intended it as quite a small group where we would work through things together. Um, that's not, that's the page. But it just grew and grew and grew and became enormous. And it wasn't what I had envisaged so I've allowed it yes it's still active it's got 18.5 members I've allowed it to stay there but I'm not really involved with it I haven't been for a long time it's become one of those groups where people post what they're doing share their paintings and everyone says whether they like them or not which is fine but it's not what gets me excited I don't uh, in our art tribe, which is our membership community for artists, which you'll be invited to join if you take the course after the course is over. Um, we have a rule where we only post what we're working on on Fridays and the rest of the time is just for discussion because otherwise Facebook groups tend to become show and tell. Like, here's my painting. Everyone tell me it's fantastic. And I want more than that out of the communities. Uh, Diana says, I'd really like to know when each module is released and is it once a week? How much time should I put aside? So I've done that. How much time? Five to six hours a week. Yeah, the module is released once a week, but then I release some extra stuff on a Friday. So it feels overwhelming if we go Monday morning. Well, here's like tons of stuff. So what we've learned over the years is to release the assignment and uh, the, me giving a little talk, just like in the taster course on a Monday, give you a few days to work on that, have a live call in the middle of the week and then release some extra stuff at the end of the week. And the extra stuff is optional. It adds to the experience, but it isn't vital. What's really vital is doing the paintings. And, and I would say listening to or attending at least one call a week. 
I'm worried about being diverted in the middle by the birth of my first grandchild. Wow, congratulations, how exciting. Um, you know what's funny about that? We Today's podcast that's come out, I do a podcast for anyone who doesn't know called Art Juice with Alice Sheridan. And we are talking in that about the unknown and about how we think we think going into the unknown is a conscious choice. So, for example, I'm going to up sticks and move to a new place. That's a conscious choice. If I stay where I am, I'm safe. That's a conscious choice to stay safe in my comfort zone. But then life just throws things at us wherever we are. So we're actually never safe in our comfort zone. So the only difference between you and other people is that you know you might have a disruption halfway through and the rest of us don't know what might happen. I might have a massive disruption halfway through. So in that sense, I suppose you've got a little bit up on us, but you have to decide, Diana, um, if you do get diverted, are you okay with catching up? Now, what we do do is throughout the course, we have two weeks that we call integration weeks. And these are weeks where we don't give you a new assignment to do. Um, we do give you still, I still film my demos. Um, we're still here answering questions, but, and we give you an optional assignment for those who are really racing ahead and just want to keep going. But for those who are needing a bit of catch up time, we take these two pauses. One is the fourth week and then five, six, seven, and then the eighth week. And often students coming into the course say, oh, I don't want to have two weeks to learn an integration. And then when we get there, they say, I'm so grateful for these two weeks, because although we're not piling assignments on you, we are giving you a lot of change. And it can be, you know, you can need some time to just let that all settle in. So those two weeks might really help as well. Hopefully the baby will be conveniently born right in one of the integration weeks. Um, Wendy, I did find your joy last year. How much will I get out of doing it again? So hard to say, Wendy, because I don't know how far you've got with your work. So I re-record everything. And of course, the live calls are all new. The demos are all new. But the basic structure of the program doesn't change. I've refined it over the years to the point now where I feel it really works. And so last year, it's not really changed from last year. Last year was quite different from the year before, but we're doing the same assignments. We're having the same lessons in the same order. If you feel on a good path with what you're doing, Wendy, I don't know if you will get more out of doing it again. That um, might be a good question to ask um, in the group, in the taster group, because there's lots of other alumni in there and give a bit more detail about where you are with your work or tell me in the comments a bit more about how you're feeling about what you're doing glad you made it live judy uh, judy is art tribe separate from the full course if yes how do i join and how much does it cost uh, it is separate totally separate it's not the same thing at all it's a community it's a source of inspiration um, it's not a course I will send out information about how to join our tribe in a few days. So that is coming up. Uh, and yes, Ron, everybody, if you want to join our tribe instead, you can do that. Just don't expect it to be the same thing because it isn't anything like this taster or anything like the course. Um, Alice, a, a, good, a great question that people ask about feedback. So you said we answer every question. Are there opportunities for individual feedback on the assignments? Yes and no. So what we're not going to do is that's wonderful. I love that. That's a beautiful painting. Or I think that painting would be better if you put a red dot in the left hand side. We're not going to do any of that. I'm, I'm vehemently against that. It's against my philosophy. Um, because we can't we want to teach you how to critique your own work i don't want you to leave the course still reliant on a coach or me to tell you if something's working or not so our philosophy is very much um 
no feedback in the sense of doing critiques on people's work. However, if you had a question that related to the lesson we were doing and you email us that or you submit it for a Q&A or you put it in the Facebook group, you will get answered about that. Um, Facebook is our hardest to keep up with. So we give you three ways to ask questions and somebody always posts in the Facebook group and then complains that we didn't answer. And that problem is sometimes we don't see every post in Facebook. So we give you three ways. And yes, you will be able to ask for specific information about whether you've understood the assignment, that kind of thing, but not, is my painting working? You can discuss that with people in the group because we want you to learn how to give feedback to other people too, which is really important. Um, question, Tessa says, I'm aware I like basic painting skills and knowledge. I'd like to do representational paintings, which make it vital. Will this course help? So it depends, Tessa. We're not gonna teach you how to draw. So if you want to do representational paintings, um, being able to draw is crucial. Um, because you're drawing in paint when you make something look like something else, it's drawing. So there's none of that. That is not what this is. If you want to explore paint and learn how it works and find your way with it, yes, this is for you. It might be worth emailing us, Tessa, with a little bit more information. Lynn, at the moment, anyone can join Art Tribe at any time. I'm not sure that will always be the case, but at the moment it is the case. Um, and I feel like I need to integrate the experience of the taster, which did feel intense. It was intense. I go back and forth on that, whether I should calm it down a bit and not offer us and not have as many assignments or stretch it out longer. But the problem is if I take something away, I'm not giving as much and it would feel more like, um, you know, sometimes you do a free thing and they don't give you any information and then they sell you something and you feel cheated because you didn't even teach me anything. And I'm paranoid about that. So maybe I put too much into the taster. So it is very intense. Am I likely to get overwhelmed? I don't think so, Anne, because we're going to go into more depth on what we've done in the taster. They're not two different things. It's like you've played on the surface of the water and now you're going to do a deep dive and get much more uh have much more time to work through the concepts but I'm not going to introduce radically different concepts in find your joy to the ones I already showed you does that make sense um let me go back to Facebook I'm looking at YouTube questions at the moment so I'm going to go back to Facebook Cindy got caught up in two days yay well done is there a discount like with Find Your Joy? I'm not sure what that question is. Sorry. Oh, you might be talking to someone else. Um, I'm going back through questions here to work out. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, Lindsay, about FYV, could you email us about that? Because I don't want to confuse the issue by talking about something that people haven't been introduced to yet. But if you email us, fyjteam at gmail.com, we'll be happy to answer that. Um, Lindsay, yes, you do get a materials list. So as soon as you sign up, you get a password, which takes you into the private website for the course, very different from the taster. You're not just going to get lessons by email, although you will get emails to remind you when there's new stuff in the classroom, but you can just log straight in with a password. And there's a whole welcome section where you uh, meet the coaches, learn the rules of the course, find the Facebook group and the materials list and course schedule is in there. The materials list is very similar to I think there's a couple of little bits later on in the course to get extra but nothing expensive so it's very similar to what we've already been using um oh Claire Claire is going to also work with textiles as well as mixed media so 
she says Leslie won't be alone if she takes the course. Um, Christine, after the course few weeks, do you continue to communicate with us the rest of the year? No. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine if my whole year was basically teaching that course? Um, I'd never get anything else done. So the preparation for the course takes me about three months before we begin. And then we have three months basically of teaching a bit less. And then we have a couple of months wrap up from that. So teaching, find your joy. And then there is a follow on course for those who want it that's more advanced. That takes up a good seven to eight months of my year. I I couldn't also for the rest of the time just forever answer the questions of every class that's taken it so that it's a live course I'm here with you for the extent of the course but the group continues and the groups run without me they don't need me after 10 weeks that's the point I'm trying to get to here I don't want you to need me for the rest of your life I want you I've just had a great email from someone she said um, I really wanted to take the course again to support you. Like she feels she's responsible for supporting me, but I don't think I need it because after last year, I'm off and running. I'm doing great work. I'm really happy with what I'm doing. I'm planning for an exhibition. I've sold lots of paintings. And now I think maybe I don't need it again. And I feel badly. <laughs> it's funny. how you... So I wrote back, you are not responsible for looking after me. I am fine. Thank you. And well done, because that is what I want. I want you to be off and running and going, Louise, who? Like, I don't even remember who she is. So you won't need me for the rest of the year. If you want little doses of inspiration and, and assignments and little challenges and things, then Art Tribe is a good place to come later if you want to, but you might not even need that. Serafina, have you a percentage of success rate of people doing the course and have found their voice to create their own unique art? I smiled when I read that because I remember asking another teacher that four years ago when I took his course and it's impossible. I wish I did, but some people stay in touch. Some people drift away. And how would you even measure that? Like, how would we know um, what we what I can say hand on heart is that we have very, very few unhappy students, not none. We always have somebody who's unhappy. Um, last year, we had a few people ask for a refund in the first two weeks, which I, I'm totally supportive of because we don't want people there who are not having a good time. And I'd rather give you your money back and let you go do something that you really enjoy. So there's always a few people who find they made the wrong decision and you have two weeks uh, up to the end of the second week. So that's a quarter of the course content to say, no, I this is not for me. Um. And then once in a while, what we do do at the end of the course is we do a survey and probably 70 percent of the students fill in that survey. About 30 percent never respond. So I don't know what they thought. And of that 70 percent, it's amazingly 95 percent positive. And then some people who are not happy. And there is that saying you can't please all the people all the time. So. I don't know. I mean, like I say, these I've said before, these cards behind me, these are all cards and messages from people who took the course and are writing to say thank you. And I put them up here to remind me of why I do what I'm doing on days when I'm really tired. This is my office. I'm currently not live streaming from my studio because my internet's a bit ropey over there and I don't know why. Um, so I just... I feel really, really good about it, Serafina, but I can't, I can't tell you. Good question for the Facebook group, though, where you can ask alumni to give you their experience. Um, Cass, and I'm remembering that you're not Felis Bobs, you are Cass. Um, if you could say one last thing to encourage someone who so wants to jump in but still hasn't pushed the button, what would that be? I'm really conscientious, conscious of this because I've just read an email from someone saying they feel I'm pushing people who can't afford it by sending out sales emails. 
The reason we send out a lot of sales emails is it's scientifically beyond a measure of doubt proven that if you don't send lots of emails, people miss the fact the course was even for sale. If you're reading every email, you feel like, oh God, leave me alone. But it is every year we get somebody who, when the course closes, says, I didn't even know this had opened. So that's why the number of emails. So I, I'm really conscious of not pushing people who don't want to do it into doing it because that's not good. However, I am I'm so proud of this course. It's the best thing I've ever created. I didn't create it, really. It came to me, like literally, and I don't want to sound all woo-woo, but literally downloaded into my brain one day. And although I've refined it and improved it over the years, the basics of what it is just came like a download. I was out in the field with my dog and I didn't even have anywhere to write it down, but I didn't need to because it just came. So I'm not boasting when I say I'm proud of it. I don't know why it came to me and not somebody else, but here it is. And um, it really changes people's lives, but you have to be in the right place for it. And the email I sent out this morning was about, are you, are you having a reason not to do it or an excuse not to do it? And there's a difference. A reason is I don't have enough money for this. I'm caring for a sick relative and that takes all my time. I'm going on holiday for three months and I won't have pain supplies with me. I'm perfectly happy with my work and I don't need this. Those are reasons, right? Those are very good reasons. And once the reason pops into our mind, we know, oh yeah, that's not a good idea for me at this time. An excuse, I get emails from people all the time telling me excuses. And at the end of all the list of excuses, they say, what do you think? Should I do it? Because really, even after they've given themselves every reason, they still want to do it. So they're not real reasons, they're excuses. And the excuses come because our brains want to keep us safe. So I'm not a psychologist, so take this with a grain of salt for those psychologists watching. But I do know this, when we think of doing something adventurous or slightly scary, our ego kicks in and goes, oh, no, 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 let me keep you safe. Let me tell you all the reasons why that's probably not a good idea. And those show up as reasons. But when you listen to them all, you still feel the pull to do the thing. Then you know they're actually just false trying to protect you because, and this is what we talk about in today's podcast, our brain doesn't, our brain doesn't know what it doesn't know. So our brain makes decisions based on past knowledge, it, but it can't see the potential. So it can see what we might lose by doing something. I might feel like a fool. I might fall behind. I might waste money. Um, I might not like what I produce. I might not enjoy the course. It can imagine all those things. It cannot see the future. So when I took the course I mentioned to you four years ago that changed my life, I could only see 1,500 pounds going out of the door, 1,500 pounds that was literally the last money we had in the bank. I mean, we were earning, but that was, our, that was all we had in savings and I was going to spend it on a course. I couldn't see. Um, the, the amount of paintings I've sold, which has far exceeded 1,500 pounds. And I wasn't really selling many before that. I couldn't see this course coming to me. I couldn't see being able to build my own studio in the garden. That would seem ridiculous. Me teaching would seem ridiculous. I couldn't see any of that because it hadn't happened yet. So when I get nervous about taking a leap into something, I think about, I remind myself, I can't see what's ahead if I do this. Um, so I don't know if that's the push you needed, Cass. If there's a specific concern you've got, do let us know in an email, fyjteam at gmail.com. My, myself and the coaches are answering emails all day at the moment, so one of us will get back to you. Lindsay says, has anyone ever done your full course more than once? Yes, all the time. Many people do. And if you come back for a second time, you get a steep discount. 
So it's much, much cheaper the second time around. And the reason I do that, I copied someone else because I thought it was such a good idea. When we bring experienced students back, they help new people because they already know the ropes. So it adds to the coaching experience that we already offer is you get the wisdom of people who've been through it before. So um, lots of people come back and say that they they get more out of it the second time. But as I was saying to Wendy earlier, it depends if you feel like you need it. Some people do it just for a jolt of creativity once a year. Some people do it because they feel they can go further with it. And some people go away after once and don't need it again. Um, Alma, hi, Louise. I spoke with an artist yesterday and she thought learning techniques and how paint works should come first so that when you're painting, you don't have to think about how to make a color and how the media works. You just paint. You said that's the wrong way around in your opinion. Can you comment on this again? Actually, I don't think that that's wrong. I think learning how paint works is good. We're doing that as we do the assignments, but I also gave you that basics of acrylics video in the taster course, which will also be in the full course for you. Because I do think learning how paint works is important. You can do that as you do the assignments, or you can do that little acrylics video and just get a sense of it. The only way to learn how paint works is to paint. I think where a lot of beginners get stuck is they're so nervous of paint that they don't do the things they need to do to learn. They're so nervous of making mistakes that they don't play with paint. So the way you learn how paint works is to use it. And that's what I'm encouraging. So I don't disagree with her, but I'm teaching you how paint works. What I was referring to when I said a lot of things begin in the wrong places starting to teach people about composition. How many beginner artists have heard of the rule of thirds or the golden mean, but you don't really know how to use it. It's just a bit of knowledge you've picked up somewhere. Um, teaching people how color works, saturation, desaturation, color value, base, color theory, all of that before you've had a play with paint stops people in their tracks. It makes you so nervous to get it wrong. So uh, with a head full of information that you can't experiment and explore. So the way I approach it is let's play with paint. Let, let's like your teacher said, or your, the other artist said, learn how paint works. Let's, let's do that. And then let's introduce composition and color theory later on once we've had a mess around. And that's the way we do it. Patricia, yes, Find Your Joy has the same assignments this year as last year. As I was saying, it's a structured program that works, so I'm not going to mess with it. it. It really is very carefully planned out to take you step by step through a learning journey. So it would make no sense to just throw new assignments in. Yes to your second question, and you can email us for more information about that. Dee says, I liked the pace of the taster. If you want to paint, you'll make the time. So yes and no. Some people, I do agree, there's prioritizing. So I used to have to paint in the evenings and on weekends, but sometimes people have lots of other things that pull them in the evenings and on weekends. But if you like the pace of that, Dee, as I said, the assignments are expansive, so you can make them into something much bigger. Um. Julia, you touched on this on a call yesterday. I hope you can provide more information about the content in Find Your Joys. I've just completed CVP and I don't want to double up. So yeah, let me go to my website. And uh, I should know the modules off by heart, shouldn't I? But my brain's frazzled. Uh, on, this, on the page about the course where I've sent you a link to with all the testimonials and all the information, if you keep going down the page, it breaks down the modules. I'm not going to give away what we're going to do because obviously then there's no point in you doing the course. But module one is about getting out of your head. So it's a continuation of what we've been doing in the taster. Module two is about embracing your own artist's voice. Um, and by the way, uh, with CVP, I don't know what Nick's new program was because he changed it this year. 
but I don't steal anything from anybody else. So you're not doing the same things. Um, but we do teach some of the same concepts because so does everyone. They're the same concepts for everyone. My, the difference is my focus is much more on finding your own voice and being inside your own head and overcoming your own blocks to, to pure expression. It's much more, that's my main focus. Whereas I think Nick's main focus is much more on principles, composition, color, design, etc. cetera. Um, so module two, embrace your artist voice. So this is um, a framework that I use to help, oh God, thousands of people now. As I said, I think it's 2,800 people so far. Find and embrace their artist voice and gain confidence. Module three is about painting to express. Um, we, we talk about shifting out of painting to please to painting your, your truth. Module four is about a new way of thinking about comparing yourself to other artists. So we're going to take compare and despair and we're going to flip it around and I'm going to give you something you can use for the rest of your life to never compare and despair again, but actually to get value out of other artists' work. And then, so it's all free and easy for the first three modules. We start bringing some analysis on our module four. And then in module five, I talk about one powerful principle that guides everything and helps you to develop your work. And that is a principle that Nick refers to and talks about in a different way. So it's not, like I say, there's no, nothing new under the sun, but it's the way I think I approach it very differently. Um, then we, in module six, seven, and eight, I start introducing what I call the fix it toolkit. So you've learned how to be free. You've started to learn how paint works. You're exploring, but you're thinking, yeah, but I don't love what I'm making. And now we get into things like composition and tonal values and color in uh, module six and seven. And then in finally, in module eight, we focus on the balance between intention and intuition. So intuition painting intuitively it's never just painted intuitively at some point you bring intention in and then with other types of art you begin with an intention say in representational painting I intend to make a beautiful painting of those flowers so we talk about the balance between intention and intuition and how you can bring both into your paintings uh, I think there is nothing I do that contradicts Nick. Well, I'm sure of that because I agree with everything Nick says. So it would never be jarring. Like, But it would be a good question, Julia, for the group, for the Facebook group. A much less biased answer than mine would be to ask people who've done both in, and see what they say. Uh, if you want to email fyjteam at gmail.com for the attention of Anne or Irene, they're to, they're, they've done both and can probably give you a good opinion as well. Georgia, I've bought crayons, paints, oil pastels, and they've stayed in the drawer. The taster was the first time I put brush to paper. In other words, I have no experience. Will I be able to do the course? Yes. Did you do the taster, Georgia? Did you enjoy it? If you did, yes. But what I would say to you is come and do it in the mindset of, I am a beginner. Don't come and do it in the mindset of, I'm a beginner. I want to be as good as that person over there who's got 20 years experience, because then it's demoralizing. Compare yourself to yourself. You are a total beginner. You are not going to make amazing art immediately, not unless you're a genius, which is possible. I, I've not met a genius yet. There are geniuses in the world. So you might be one of those prodigies who just does it instantly without having to work at it. But when I was a beginner, if I had had this course, I've designed this course of what I wish I'd had when I was starting out because I'm giving you everything you need to then go off and I'm giving you a two or three year head start on other beginners. That's what I'm saying. Um... 
How many participants in a group usually says, Liz, it's been different every year, Liz, and this year I can't predict it because um, at the moment we look like we're ahead of last time in terms of the number of people, but we've got one less day of sales because of how it fell this year. So I really don't know. But last year we had 1,400 people. The year before we had 900. The year before that we had 300. Um, so it's grown. I don't think it's going to grow this year based on what I'm seeing. It might be the same as last year, but I honestly, I don't know. Um, yeah, Lindsay says the course was a cosmic fax that came into my brain. It was, it was. Um, Lindsay, I'm curious how I even got to know about your find your joy taster. Was it just a marvelous mystery? Probably all the money I spent, Lindsay. Probably all the money I spent. Advertising the course um, is done through Facebook and Instagram. And it's done through targeting. I don't do it. I have someone who does it for me because I don't understand it. But you can target people um, who have allowed Facebook and Instagram to do that on their phones, then you can let them see ads which are relevant to them. And so you would have come across maybe a video I made or a post I wrote for months before the course, I'm spending money on advertising because it's the only way to reach people who don't already know me. I also do a lot all year for free, obviously, where I'm not paying for it. So I do YouTubes. You might have seen me on YouTube. I do Facebook posts. And I just start mentioning the taster when we get closer. Janet is a fence sitter. I'm wondering if you think it best if someone takes the course to concentrate solely, solely on your course and not do any others. Um, I think I need a course for that. People who take too many courses. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think this course will work for you if you do bits and pieces of it, Janet. I mean, it, it'll be fun, but I'd love it if you would just do the whole thing. I'd love it if you'd follow it through and not take any other courses while you're doing it. Just focus on this. It's a bit like if you go on a diet plan and you say, um, I'm not going to, I'm going to go on a low carb diet, but I'm also going to go on Weight Watchers and I'm going to try and do both. And then you take in bits of advice from both, which clash with each other and then they don't work. So I think it's good to pick one and focus on it. And personally, I think it should be mine, of course. Um, Cindy, do you have an exhibition of students work at the end? Um, no, just because we're all so far away and the organization of that online is more than my little team can manage, but it would be great, wouldn't it? Um, Cass, I'm glad my answer helped. Uh, Mandy's away for three weeks in June. Can I still catch up or will I feel left out? I wonder which three weeks, Mandy, because the, the fourth week, so hang on. Um, get my calendar. I mean, I don't know if you can catch up because I don't know how much else you have on, but we have module one is June 6th, module two the 13th, module three the 20th, and then the tw week of the 27th is an integration week for redoing assignments, catching up. As I said, I do give you a new assignment, but you don't have to do it. It's not part of the structured learning, it's an extra. So it depends if you're if that includes one of the weeks you're away, you're actually only missing two modules. And I would also ask, is there a way for you to at least watch the videos while you're away? So you're, you're on track to practice when you get back. Denise, I get bogged down with tone and values. Any suggestions? In what sense, Denise, you can't tell the tonal value of a color? It helps me to make it black and white sometimes. Lindsay, will you help me get rid of self-criticism and striving for perfection? I'll do my damnedest. I'll do my damnedest. I help lots of people do that. Um, it's up to you too, though, Lindsay. You've got to do what I'm asking you to do. It's a bit like you go to a, a life coach and they say, right, I went to one and she said, you have to write a happiness diary every day and write down the things you're happy about, which I did for about three days and then stopped doing it. 
and surprisingly it didn't work because I stopped doing it. So let me just switch to YouTube because I'm missing YouTube questions here. So um, Oh, Diane is a psychologist and she says I haven't said anything wrong yet. So that's good. Um, Susie said, why isn't there lifetime access to the Find Your Joy course? It would be great to have as a continuing reference. It's purely practical, Susie, from years of experience of working online. People say lifetime access to a course. I took a course that gave me lifetime access recently. And then the software platform she was using shut down. And she had to move all the old students that she'd given lifetime access on onto a new platform involving hiring someone to help do that, involving no doubt a nightmare avalanche of emails that must have overwhelmed her from people who had long ago paid for that course. And that takes away from what you're doing now in your life that you've got to manage that. I And that was somebody who doesn't have tens of thousands of people on their courses. I can't even imagine the nightmare of that if my software platform shut down of moving everyone over. And the second thing is because until this year, it was improved and changed every year and I didn't want people accessing old stuff. But mainly it's that practical knowledge of nothing lasts forever. I'm using a very good software platform that it will be purchased at some point or it will shut down or go bankrupt and when it does I want to worry about the current class and making sure they get access on wherever I have to move but I don't want to have to try and sort out the nightmare of five years of archived people moving them as well and I price it that way by the way I price it accordingly the, the, the value of a year's access is built in. If it was going to be lifetime access, I would make it more expensive to cover the costs of that likelihood. Minka, I missed the taster. Can I take the course? Of course you can, Minka. And actually, we move the taster lessons into the course hub. So you could always catch up with them in the integration weeks or even after the 10 weeks is over. Or if you have more time during the week, during the week. The taster isn't like a prep for the main course. It's a, a way to give people a sense of what it's like to work with me so they can decide for themselves if they want to do the course. Jenny, uh, roughly how much time each week? Five to six hours. If you go back to the beginning, Jenny, when we're done, you'll see me answer that in more detail, but five to six hours to do everything I'm giving you a week. Um, and Libby, thanks for being in the chat, answering questions as well. That's very helpful. Um, Maggie, I'm a fence sitter too. Oh, hang on. Sorry. A Alma, I found out through someone when visiting an open studio, the artist did your course in 2018. Oh, wow. So if they did my course in 2018, Alma, they were one of the very first people. I wonder who it was, because the very first time I did it, it had 40 people doing it. Um, I did it as a guinea pig. I said, who wants to be a guinea pig and help me develop this course? And Anne was one of those people. And Irene was one of those people. Um, Maggie, I'm a fence sitter too. I've done creativity at art school. I know quite a bit about color. Where I've struggled is always identifying what drives me, what passions I have, my intentions, et cetera. Will this course help? Yes, I believe so. I think that's what it's really all about. I think that's where its strength is. Um, because this is what I was saying, Maggie, about how so much art education focuses on the technical aspects and not on the creativity aspects on what you actually need to know in order to make art that matters to you. What I will say though, is it's an ongoing revelation. So I'm not sure if I said this in the video I made about my story. I'm, I've told people before though, so I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but I initially, when I started to discover what, what my work was about, I discovered it was about I thought I was painting landscapes and I was never really that into it. And then I realized, no, I'm painting the feeling of being in the landscape. 
So that was my focus for about a year and I was very happy. And then I realized another layer deeper. No, it's not just what is the feeling of being in the landscape. It's a sense of freedom. So I'm painting freedom. And as I worked, then questions pop into your head as you're working. So why, why do I associate a wild moorland with freedom? Well, because when I was a kid, I was quite um, a tomboy. I liked playing out in the woods and climbing trees. And my mom and dad, I think, thought that wasn't very feminine or whatever. For whatever reason, I always felt a bit, mm, I'm not quite right when I'm doing those things. But when we went on holiday, we went camping up in the hills. My cousins came and we were all allowed to run wild doing whatever we wanted. And I did all boy things then and it was fine and no one bothered me. Oh, I'm painting that feeling. And now I'm realizing actually my new work is about self-expression and accepting yourself and being who you are loudly and proudly without feeling bad. And I don't mean to diss my mom and dad because they were lovely, but all our parents screw us up one way or another. So that's a long way of saying, Maggie, that you don't find it all in one go, but you do once you find a clue that's satisfying and you work on that for a while and the new clues come and it's all about letting go of just like I was saying about paintings letting go of the desire to find the answer and just letting the answer emerge in layers and I don't know what my next layer will be but it's exciting to think what it will be Nishma says this is going to be my second time yay welcome back Nishma you've also done CVP and thought that was amazing too and uh, thank you for this. Louise has a way of saying and doing, which really helps you to go further in your art. Oh, thank you, Nishma. I, do you know what? I do, but I don't know why. This is, the, this is the, when I was saying about the unknown, I don't know why I'm good at this. I never thought I could teach people. So a, a few years before I started teaching, a friend of mine said, maybe you could teach an art class. And I said, I can't teach. What have I got to teach people? I'm still learning. But now I realize that you can teach when you're still learning because A, we're all still learning. And B, it's about what you teach. And it just happens. I seem to be good at inspiring people and I seem to be good at giving people courage. And I'm just so grateful for that. And I love doing it. Um, how will I know I'm doing this right? Are there signs that this course is working with my art, says Jessica? So yes, how will you know if you're doing it right? Do you feel joyful? Are you full of energy? Are you really loving what you're doing? That's when you know when you're doing it right. Um, is your do you see an improvement in your own art a year from now? Are you looking at it going, look how far I've come? I love what I'm making now. That's how you know it's working. Hannah Vickery. Oh, wow. Yes. Hannah Vickery. And Sarah Banks is here. She was a guinea pig. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you. I'm so grateful to my guinea pigs because they were the ones who took a chance on me and let me experiment on them. <laughs> and I didn't know guinea pigs were injured in the creation of this course. Helene, sorry, I'm just joining. What date does the course start? We, we have a welcome call on June the 5th, Sunday in the evening, though. So that might not be ideal for down under people but that will be recorded for everyone but then we start on June 6th with the first lesson Monday morning Christine um, I do like your honest direct approach of course it's your income but you seem to give so much of yourself how do you replenish your energy honestly doing this I, I I'd love to say I do this for nothing I wouldn't do this for nothing. This is a lot of work, but I, I will always teach and make YouTube videos and do things on Facebook as long as I'm alive, I think, because I just love it. It does replenish my energy. And painting. Um, I don't really look after myself very well physically, I don't think, but um, I'm trying to get better at that. Will you find your voice on this course, says Elaine? I can't promise you'll have found your artist voice by the end of 10 weeks, Helene. No one can promise you that. I have no idea. Some people do. Some people start on the path. What I can promise you is you'll have a much clearer idea than you do now. 
And you, depending on where you are, what blocks you have, what passions you have, how much work you put into it, depends how far along you get along that path. But what I want to do is, it's like I'm giving you all the things you need and you can go off now and keep exploring. So the course I took in 2018 was Nick Wilton's CVP program. By the end of that, I made a series of work, but I wouldn't say I'd found my voice because do you ever fully find that? But I hadn't got to a stopping point. I'd made some paintings, but I had got an inquiry, like a road to go down. That's it. He set me on a path. He put me in a car and he set me going down this road. And it was up to me now to drive the car and decide which roads to go down and which places to explore and which places to ignore and when I wanted to stop for a rest. And he gave me everything I needed to the point where a few years down the road, I was still going, oh, that's what he was talking about. I understand now. And that's been he's my model for teaching in the sense that I want to give you the same. I don't want to have you be reliant on me for 10 weeks and then leave and not know what to do. I want you to be driving your own car down the road and finding your way as you go. It's funny, isn't it, though? And I'm not picking on you, Helene, because I was like this when I took his course. We want definitive answers. I remember writing to Nick and saying, will I learn how to sell more art if I take your course? And he wrote back and said, I don't know. I don't teach how to sell art. What I do know is if you put in the work, you'll get better at painting and that gives you more chance of selling. And I loved that he was honest with me that he couldn't just give me a guarantee that that would happen. Um, Lindsay says a quote, when one teaches to learn, so true, I learn all the time. Charmaine, when do we have to sign up by? Thursday, June the 2nd at midnight Pacific time. Janie, so glad you'll be coming back and joining us. I totally remember you from last year. Um, hi, Christine. I'm so glad you're going to join us. I promise to do my best for you. Let me go back to YouTube. Uh, sorry, YouTubers. I'm trying not to neglect you. Um, now, I am just going to scratch my nose gets very itchy when I talk and I don't want you to think I'm picking my nose I'm just telling you um let me go back I'm just trying to see where I got to in YouTube they make the questions so small let's see if I can make them bigger um Minka our classes on Mondays at what time so um the classes like the taster can be watched at any time I will be sending them out around 6 or 7 a.m uk time and I wish that the software allowed me to send it out early morning for everyone, you know, set by time zones, but it doesn't, unfortunately. We just have to do it the same time for everyone. Um, will this call be recorded so you can go back and listen to it? Yes, Minka, it's on my YouTube channel. It's right there for you. And I'll send out an email with links to everybody. Anna says, when is the second integration week? Let's have a look. It is... The week of July the 25th is the second one. Uh, Lisa, I'm sorry if this has been discussed already, but I just joined. Can you explain why this course is good for a beginner? Um, because, Lisa, it's the course that I wish I'd had when I was a beginner. It's, that's why it's here. It's what I wanted. Um, I wished I'd had the community of other artists, some of whom were a lot more experienced than me, so I could learn from them. Um, I wish I'd had the I I wish I'd had the knowledge that play and experimentation was everything. I wish I'd been given basics about color and composition and tone in a really straightforward, easy to understand way, rather than lots of rules and things that I couldn't quite understand. So. But as I said to someone else, as a beginner, what's really important is being strong in yourself and being OK with the fact that you're a beginner because you're going to be in a course. There'll be lots of beginners. There always is. In fact, I'd say 30 percent of the students will be beginners. 
based on prior years, maybe even 40. But the beginners often feel um, comparing and despairing. Oh, God, look at her. She's so good. Yeah, well, she's been painting for 20 years and making a living from it. And you're a beginner. So if you want to beat yourself up by saying, look how crap I am compared to an experienced professional, you can do that. But it's not very productive because, of course, you can't be that good instantly. So as long as you can be happy in yourself that you're learning um, without this becoming a stressful experience of comparison, I think go for it because it's, it is, I wish I had had this. It, it would have shaved off two or three years from my artist development. Just somebody saying don't rush for results would have saved me a fortune because I went and bought business cards. I had, I had um, greetings cards printed. I even got some prints made of things that now I wouldn't dream of selling to anyone. And I have them in a cupboard somewhere. So it was a waste of money. If someone had said, don't try and race for the finish line, it would have been so helpful to me. Diana, are all your students women? And do you have a theory about this? They're not all. Um, we always have men in the course. They're very quiet, probably because they feel outnumbered. Um, most of the online courses I've taken and actually in-person courses I've taken have been almost all women. I don't know if it's because men tend not to join things, like when they want to do something, they just go do it. I don't know if it's because men see these things and see they're full of women and stay away. I don't know if it's because men are not comfortable asking for help. I don't know why. But I do think women in general, I hate generalizing, but I'm going to anyway. In general, we look for support when we want to do something. We're used to getting together with other women and getting support. Um, but even classes taught by men are, are mostly women. And I've seen people say, oh, the women are only joining because they like that particular male teacher. But no, it just seems to be the way it is. Um, I have no idea how you get into museums, no lies told, because I'm not in a museum. I don't know. Uh, my Brit Seville. I think I'm exactly where you were after your CVP. I took CVP in 2021 and I don't think I'm ready for another course just yet, but would art try be a good place to be instead? It might well be. It might well be. It's. I'll tell you all about that in a few days. It's just I can only keep my brain focused on so many things at once. But yes, it might well be good inspiration, community, and, and it's um, a very low commitment because you can leave if you don't like it. Stacy, I won't be running another Find Your Joy later in the year. I won't, I, like I say, teaching takes up eight months of my year already. And then I have four months for painting. Um, so no, this is once a year and probably not next year. Although I said that last year and then ended up changing my mind. Um, Georgia, thank you. I am not the genius or prodigy. We don't know that though, do we? We don't know. You might be. <laughs> I'm glad that you're joining. And um, I will ask people to be patient when I ask stupid questions about artists speak. Do you know what? You don't even need to ask people to be patient. They just will be because everybody knows they've been in the same place you are and they know. So. Jessica, I don't understand this question. I'm sorry. Do we get a critty fact of finishing this course? Oh, I bet it means certificate. <laughs> I bet you're typing on a phone or something. Uh, no, there's no certificate. Um, but you will have your life changed. So a certificate would seem small compared to that. Could you speak about the journaling? What materials to use or avoid? What would be examples? Art journal is a forest con foreign concept to me. So we're not doing art journaling in the sense of uh, some people do those beautiful art journals with writing and drawings and collage and things. We're not doing that. What you're going to create is a studio journal. It, uh, people sometimes just call it a sketchbook, a studio journal, um, a notebook. We're gonna, you're going to use it for reflection for understanding yourself more and for understanding the art that you like more. Um, so it's a real deep dive into you. Some people don't do it. Some people just don't like journaling. 
But even the questions I ask, even if you just think about them or meditate on them, um, if you don't really don't like writing, but I find a studio notebook to be a really useful part of my practice. And when you join the course, you get examples of how I use them. Charmaine, this will be your third time. Wow. Marion, will it be useful to do the course again? So I answered that earlier, Marion. You probably just came in. I don't know because I don't know where you are um, and what you want to get out of it a second time. So some people don't need it and some people really do need it again um, or feel like it would be valuable or feel like it would be enjoyable. It's really about how you feel in yourself and where you are with your art journey and if you feel it would be beneficial. I think I might be done with the questions. Um, people are asking about the follow on course to find your joy and I'm not going to talk about that just now other than to say it will run but I'm not focusing on that because we're focused on this and I don't want people getting confused and thinking that they have to do something else as well so we'll talk about all that later on thank you everybody for your questions thank you for your attention throughout the free course if you're someone who won't be um carrying on with us we really appreciate the energy and enthusiasm that you've put into this free course it really is something that yes it's marketing it's a way of me letting you know what what I have to offer it's like the shop putting out their wares the grocery store putting out all their fruit and vegetables so you can see if you want to go inside but it's also really rewarding to do in and of itself and I know that my coaches and I have really enjoyed it we need a few days lie down, but we've really enjoyed it. And I hope that you've got a lot out of it. Um, okay, everybody, I am going to sign off now. I will be back at 6 p.m. tonight in the same places. So if by any chance I missed your question or you just want to hear me blathering again, you can come back then. If you are down under, you will be fast asleep by then. But I hope you've enjoyed actually being able to attend a live call. and. Um, Take care, everyone. It's lovely to see all your comments. I can see all your thank yous. And um, we're just so grateful for you being here. Take care, everybody. Bye.